felt like your work or your job is meaningless, maybe for you, whether it's a career or school or whatever you're doing currently right now, maybe you're doing it to provide for yourself, provide for your family, uh, to get income so you can do the things that you need to in your life. Uh, but over time, has it ever felt like the things that you're doing are not making a big impact in our world and it seems kind of pointless? When I was 10 years old, I started working in my dad's electrical company. Um, and as a kid, I loved it. I loved going to work with my dad. I loved learning about electrical work. I loved meeting homeowners and solving problems and working with my hands. It was a really fun job. Um, and then after when I graduated school, I, I started working with him full time. Uh, we started building our company and building our business and really investing a lot into that and learning more about electrical work and I, and I loved it. But over the years, the more and more I did it, I had this strange feeling that the work I was doing, it felt like it wasn't really purpose filled. And it felt like everything I was doing was almost wasted and there was no really big meaning behind it. Kind of got depressing. I kind of felt like I wasn't doing anything that was worthwhile. And I feel like that's where a lot of us are in our own lives, in our job, or maybe it's our school, whatever it is. We feel like we're doing these things because we have to, because we have to provide for ourselves. But we're often left wondering, am I doing anything that's meaningful, that's filled with purpose, that makes a difference in our world, in my life? And there was one thing that changed my entire perspective on this, which went from a place where I felt like I was doing something that was dull and ordinary to something that I felt I had a lot of purpose and meaning into. And this is so important for us to get because if we don't get this concept, uh, then we'll spend our entire life feeling like we're not doing things that are, are filled for the kingdom of God or we're not doing things that actually make an impact in our world and we'll be left feeling dry. And I wanna read this passage. This is found in the creation story of the universe in Genesis chapter one. Uh, this is a story about how God created everything and what he put uh, inside of us and the direction he gave us when he created human beings. This is found in Genesis chapter one, starting in verse 26, it says this. It says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his image. In his image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So in this story, God is creating everything. And this passage of the Bible, the writer of this story, describes how God creates the world, but also how he creates us, male and female, human beings. And he says that he created male and female, both, both male and female, in the image of God. And what this means is that there is something about human beings. There's something that we inherently hold, a dignity that we hold, that in some ways replicate the characteristics of God in, in some ways. That we hold an inherent value, we hold dignity, we hold a worth over our entire lives without doing anything, without achieving anything, because we are made in the image of God. And more importantly, it means that there are some type of characteristics of God that we can can display because we bear that image. And this is so important for us to understand because in this story, this passage that we read, what is the first thing that we see God doing? It says that we are made in, in God's image, that, that there's something that, that mirrors God, that we can tell who God is in some ways because of who we are. But what do we see God doing? What is he trying to communicate? And one of the first things that we see God doing, something miraculous, is that God is creating. He is working. He is taking chaos and he's putting order to it. He is taking material and he's bringing beauty to it. He's putting form to it. The very first characteristic that we see of God is that in his infinite wisdom, he is taking chaos and he's making order. He is working. He is quite literally, in some cases, a farmer, uh, you know, tending to animals or, or growing things out of the ground. And, and why is this important? This is so important because what this means is that us being made in the image of God, we are supposed to mimic and, and, and mirror that aspect of God. 
And one of the very first things that God is trying to communicate to us at the very beginning of time is that we as human beings are created to work. And that might sound depressing to you at first, like, well, that's not very fun. But what God is telling us to do, he's saying that we are created to take chaos and bring it into order. We are, we are created to take the things that he has created and tend to them, to care for them, to create out of them, out of the things that God has blessed us with. That there is an, an inherent value and purpose over our lives that we are supposed to and meant to work. And get this, that this is the mission and purpose of God, of human beings here on this earth, to take, create, and to work and to cultivate this earth that God has given us. So why is this important? Is this just some really weird theological fact that we can know that makes us feel better about ourselves? No, get this. If you are a plumber or if you're an electrician, every single time that you go to somebody's house to fix a leaky pipe or to replace a toilet, you are going to take chaos and bring it to order. If you are an accountant, you are taking all of these numbers and all of these facts and you are taking chaos and you are putting them to order. You are creating something. You are cultivating something. And in those moments, you are a mirror of God. You are living out the image that God has placed over you. You are living out your purpose here in this life. And it doesn't matter what you do or what you are doing or where you go, that you can display the image of God through the work that you are doing. And God looks down and he sees you and he says, this is the purpose that I have created you for, to take the things that I have made, to bring beauty to them, to create order to them, and to glorify his name. I want to read this next passage because this brings even more insight to this conversation. This is found in Romans chapter 12, starting in verse 1. It says this, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. This is saying that in everything we do, whether it's our work or our school or sports team, whatever it is, that we should do everything for the glory of God. We should do everything with integrity, with passion, with excellence, knowing that it's not just our names that are tied to it, but it's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who is being glorified with all of these things. So what would that change about our perspective with our work? How would that change how we go about our job, with our family, with the people around us, if we knew that everything we did was an act of worship to God? that we are glorifying his name, that the work we can do, we can bring beauty to the creation that God has provided for us. We can bring order there where there was chaos before and everything has a purpose to that because it is the very specific purpose that God has given us when he created us in the Garden of Eden. How would your life change? How would your job change? How would your perspective change when you went into a daunting task or a daunting workplace? Knowing that God sees you and you can glorify his name in everything that you do. So I hope this brings some encouragement for you. I hope this changes your perspective and how you view your job because I believe and I believe that this is what God is telling us that, that your job has purpose and meaning because it glorifies him and you are living out the mission that God has called us to when he created us by fulfilling the image of God inside of your own life. Guys, I hope this helps and I hope that you uh, go into your workplaces now with a, with a different perspective on your job. Yeah.